Hi, my name's Cathy Millett and this week it's culverts again, this time grassing them. So we're modelling grass. In this picture, out in the real world, you can see that sometimes grass has a dead top. That's quite simple to model with putting a second coat on of a lighter coloured static grass. In the rest of the world, it's often quite uniform. We see a lot of parks, a lot of mown areas or fields where the animals keep it short and fairly the same throughout. However, other places you go, it's a lot patchier. If there's shade, if there's different water in just sitting around in the landscape, you might end up with patches of long grass and patches of short grass. And that's another technique that we need to look at. How do we just get some slight variation into our grass? Well, we're still continuing looking at culverts. It's our third week on just doing the basic diorama. So if you look at it, we started a couple of weeks ago with the culvert itself, painted that. Then we went on and added a plaster cloth and grout sort of soil layer, really, that, that underlying landscape. And this week we're doing grass um, as the final touch, um, just a makes it look a lot more polished, I think, having some scenery and, and um, vegetation on there. So, grass. So what's the next step on our little mini dioramas? Well, to be honest, you can see there's quite a lot of um, white showing around the edges. So I'm just going to make sure, I'm going to pick a mm, sludgy brown of some description. I'm just going to add a little bit of brown on the back so that the, the white doesn't show through. Um, nothing is really white in nature. And also where I've got a few edges of, um, hmm, I'll try a different colour, where, we, where we've got a few edges of um, the culverts that are, and the plaster coming on, I'm just going to cover them off with this as well. This looks like a better colour. It doesn't really matter what it is particularly, because it is eventually going to get um, covered with vegetation and things, but it's just enough to stop anything white coming through. And I should have done this probably first, but I didn't, so hindsight's a wonderful thing. I'm going to add static grass to each of these and to do that um, I have a sort of tried and tested method that I do for all my landscaping and it's, it's come down from years of experience and I've got a mix, um, which is you can tell it's been on my layouts but there's bits in it, of um, sort of half used hoovered off um, grass and I like knock grass best, this is knock, um, it comes in a variety of colours, I find it's brighter Woodland scenics also do grass. I just find it, it looks a little bit more dull almost. So take your pick, this might suit you. I prefer knock, especially um, for the bright summers. Um, if you're doing sort of off the end of the year, then these more sludgy colours may help. And actually, I do mix them in. You can see there's a, there's a mix in here. What I also frequently do is add in long and short grass. So this is actually a mix of several different grass lengths. And in, the HO, you don't necessarily want it to be too large, so this is just spring meadow grass, but I've also used stoy grass and wild grass, and the wild grass can be a bit longer. And it can be interesting, this is a dark green one, to just add in a few lengths that stick out above the rest. So I'm just going to add a little bit more into this mix that I've got here. Let's just snip it open. Um, it never comes out. And then when you shake it in the, the mix, it will add a bit of length in there. So you can see it's quite a lot longer. If it's too long, you can always um, um, sort of cut it down later with trim it with a pair of scissors. So there are thousands of different ways and methods of doing static grass. And I like the knock one because I've had it, um, I've had it a long time. I've had it from scratch, sort of since it first came out. So the first thing is to put on a coat of glue, then you just coat it with your um, static grass in some way, and then you hoover the excess off, which just lifts everything up again into a more vertical. So the first thing we're going to do is put the glue on. We're going to do them one at a time. I'm not going to do the section at the bottom down here because that's going to be the, um, well, what can I call it? It's going to be the sort of streamways, and I'll do that when I do the culvert. So I'm just looking at the top down the back here. I just put a bit of water on to, to get it all going and then a little bit of my normal tacky glue. Now these will stick to wherever you put them. Um, now there's thousands of glue products and I probably should put a disclaimer on there will no doubt be a better one that you have used. 
that's a proprietary make or something like that. I'm I'm just cheap and I like to just use um, whatever I've got on hand. Slightly soft the brush. I do hate using brushes for glue. Um, they just you know, just screw them up a bit, doesn't it? So here we go. So I've dampened it, it should spread a little bit better because the tacky glue is quite strong. water so it doesn't clog up and the next thing to do is to static grass it. Now this is my static grass machine it's actually got a mix in here already of quite long stuff quite short stuff got some um, you can see quite a variety so if you put too much in I find that it doesn't come out very well if you don't put enough in then you're forever filling it up so a few handfuls some of those white bits out and the trick um, is to sort of keep this in something that's wet and so will help conduct. And I'm just going to put it there for now. So you turn it on, you can get a nasty shock off this. There's all sorts of ways of um, um, doing um, sort of nozzles on the end and, and everything you can possibly imagine. Um, I find I get a bit bored when they don't come out. So this works really well. And it's quite a lot of just waving it around and trying to fill everything. Okay. Do it down here, just to cover that gap. enough and um, turn it off first because that's where you get your shocks go back in and just sometimes it gets a bit sort of stuck together and sometimes it is just a bit too long so the um the shorter stuff does come out first so, um, and i'm just gonna wave this on it's really for this side um yes it's not really staticking i know because it's on the um Screws in. So there it is. It's it's quite fine still. And you look at that and you'll go, oh, we need a bit more. That's the second stage. So we'll come to that soon. So what you need to do now, now this is my um, this is my hoover I use for scenery. So inside is a um, something you can collect in because it's all green. And that's because I use this predominantly for grass or other um, scenery materials. So I have occasionally done something dusty in them. And there we go. So this is the noisy stage. So that pulls off all the excess grass, which you need to do because there's always a lot more on here than you need. This is the first level on. If I look at it from the side, I can definitely see there's a lot of grass sticking up, right? So what I'm going to do now is leave this one to dry and do the other three. So there we go. All of that is going to set up um, probably for a few days now, to be honest, because, you know, work gets in the way of modelling. And um, I'll do another coat where I feel that it needs it and might do a, a couple of other um, colours or something on top just to bring it out. So. so we're nearly done now. I just need to do the final bit on some of this grass. Doesn't it look a lot better now it's dried? When it's got the white on it, it um, the glue as white, it just looks awful. And as soon as it dries, you go, wow, that's much better. You can actually, in a couple of places, see a little bit of gloss through, like here. And I think that needs another coat. So what we're going to do is we're going to do two more coats um, on any areas that look a little bit patchy. 
And I'll just show you two different techniques. So, well, it's one technique, but it's two different colours. So basically, the easiest way, let's put this on to a, uh, what we're trying to do is just add a little bit more depth to it. So just take a finger, spread it out, and just brush the tops of your grass and it should all stay more or less in, in the area you want to add a few more in. You will find some comes off on your finger, that's inevitable. And on this one, that's the only spot that, maybe a little bit up here, that I want to do. And in this instance, I'm just going to sprinkle a bit of this on and this is still the green. Now, it's very hard to attach anything to um, this small amount to get it to stand static. So in some ways this is just tapping it out. So we do that and we cover that and we do it up here and we cover here. Yep. There's plenty in there, just not wanting to come out. There we go, we'll give up at that point. So there we've got a little bit more on there. And I'm just gonna leave that one to dry for a little minute and then we're going to hoover it off again. And this one here and the next one, I'm just gonna do a slightly different color. And this is to show you, um, if you're doing late summer or just a different type of grass, maybe a longer grass. What you can do is you can tip out your existing green into your sort of um, there, and you can put in something like this, which is a wild grass and it's in burnt grass. And when you think about it, quite a lot of grass for part of the year will have a burnt element um, where the top is, but it's still slightly green underneath. So I just put that in there. And I do like the odd, um, just difference in colour. I think it makes a, a big difference. If you don't, if you're doing too early in the year, what you can always do is just do it with a different colour of green, um, and that will make a oops, I've done that once. That will make a, a nice difference, just just to make it look patchy because you don't want it all to look identical. So I'm going to do this section here, and oops. A little bit over here. And I'm just going to turn it on, which gives it a bit of st static. And do that. Now, this is subtle, I don't want it covered. But in um, one area where I wanted to do a whole bank of this, I used a spray glue that you get in a rattle can and that worked incredibly well. Um, and I just masked any areas, masked off any areas that I didn't want to um, have too much um, extra and did it that way. So there we go. So this is what they look like when they're done. You can see the grass has a bit of variety a little bit of texture, and I think it really adds something onto the hillside to the diorama. This week, the mini Cathy's encounter something that makes their hair stand on end. Well, here we go. Culverts again! Culverts! 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 Yep, look, very much like last week, the culverts. But they've got grass! Look at this, look at this grass! Isn't it great? I mean, like, grass! Who knew? Who knew it could be so exciting? Grass? Yeah. So there we go. Grass. Next week. 
I don't know, see what's inside the culvert because I think it goes somewhere. I have had a look and there's definitely something on the other side. But that's next week. Hmm. Do you know something? brave enough to enter the culverts. And if they do, what will they find? The other side. Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode on how to ground grass to your culverts. I like the way they've come out. I think there's a bit of variety. It looks quite interesting. And if you're enjoying it, then subscribe to me on YouTube. Alternatively, like me on Facebook, Kathy Millet Modeling or my website, kathymillett.co.uk. And tune in next week to see how we do the individual treatments.